Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen. Alpha 3.10 is quite a bit different with its ship combat and as we have the first wave of PTU I wanted to talk about some hands-on changes in brief so hopefully you'll be able to understand them a bit better those changes and use them a bit more effectively once they're in your hands. Let's start with targeting. So targeting is now completely different and you're going to be looking more with your eyes and aiming where you're going to be targeting. Um, rather than sort of like using automated systems like we did previously. It's broken down into three main areas targeting. Selection, locking and pinning. Selection, so rather than pressing a hotkey to sort of like cycle and auto target, it's a bit more hands on now. Look or point at a target to select or highlight it and then you'll see a little uh, box around it on the HUD and then you can actually do this with your um, head tracking as well. Literally looking at the target will select it. So does that do anything? Well, not really. It just shows that you've got it selected and that you can do something else with it. Locking a target will then draw pips and give you combat information on that target. So you can lock a target by having it selected. So looking at it and then pressing one while you're looking at it. Bam. You can then unlock it the same way as well by pressing one while you've got it locked. Also by pressing two, that will automatically lock the closest target that has you locked, if there are any, yeah? So if someone else has locked you, you press two, it will show you the closest target that has you locked. And that can obviously change when you press two again. So you can have a target locked and a separate one selected. And pinning is the sort of like the third part of this. So you can pin or unpin your selection. So the ship that you are looking at, which may or may not be targeted by pressing three. That allows you to then cycle through those pinned targets, up to three pinned targets, by pressing the four and five keys. So you could pin three separate targets and then cycle through them. And the one being cycled two is the one that's targeted. Zero will clear all pinned targets. You can have up to three pinned targets at once. You can also assign ships to specific pin slots by pressing left alt and then holding one, two or three. And that will pin them with that um, number, one, two or three. And then if you want to target something that you've pinned from that list then you can hold uh, left alt and then tap one two or three so hold to pin tap to target in my opinion getting used to that form of what's known as indexed uh, pinning and targeting is significantly better than going sort of like cycling through one at a time and that sort of stuff so um, learning to hold left alt and one, two, or three, and then tapping it, whatever, holding it, um, is significantly better. Or setting controls up better for your needs. Uh, but uh, use that. Indexing is much more sensible, in my opinion. Uh, you can also set in the game settings to only use uh, that method known as indexing as well if you want. So you can customize those flight controls um, in the targeting section of flight controls. And there's lots of other useful ones there as well. You can set keys to cycle through selectable targets in your front arc as well. So say that you've got um, three or four ships in your front arc. Um, and you want to select a specific one, but it keeps on going to a, a one that you don't want. Uh, you can set a key to actually cycle through anything that's sort of in that general area. Uh, you'll have to set a key for that if you want it, though it's not a default thing. Uh, in game settings, you can set your preferred pip to lag and lead like you could before, but it's worth going back through these again because the way pips are now calculated is a much more smoother experience uh, for you. So um, lead, uh, for pips is the default and it draws an area that you need to aim at from the locked ship. So the locked ship uh, draws a line that you then point your nose at or your gimbals at and fire at. Lag, uh, lag pips, they draw an aiming reticle from your HUD, so like uh, from your crosshairs, that you then have to position over the ship that you're shooting at. Rather than being drawn from the enemy ship, it's drawn from your crosshairs. You can also choose to turn off a load of the HUD info and combat assistance if you wish in game settings. So ship's thrusters, they now have jerk. So basically it takes time for a thruster to accelerate up to the sort of speed it needs to to help get you the motion that you require from the IFCS. So I turn to the right to do a maneuver or whatever. It doesn't instantly just put all my acceleration to the right. It takes a little, a little bit of time to get my thrusters up to the right speed and all that sort of stuff. Um, so that makes ships feel more righty and they have a slight delay in their motions and maneuvers, which you can use both to your advantage um, in the way that you move and knowing how your enemy is likely to move as well. Fixed weapon assist. So this is a massive change to hitting targets when using fixed weapons, manned turrets, or manual gimbals. Basically, you don't need to be as precise with your hits. The game will allow a smaller margin of error at the moment that makes a lot more projectiles hit than would have hit before. So you just have to aim 
as accurately as you can and you will be pretty rewarded for that. Evasive maneuvers will still make pilots be able to avoid damage uh, for sure, but um, a lot of projectiles are still going to be hitting you unless you're really, really quite aggressively um, doing some, some evasive maneuvers. The fixed weapon assist is not a full-on auto-aim. It's not like auto gimbals, although auto gimbals aren't a full-on auto-aim. They are very auto aim -y. They're They're quite a powerful one. Um, so you can cycle through your gimbaled and fixed weapon modes by pressing R if your ship has gimbals anyway, otherwise it'll just be on fixed. Uh, and then that's going to cycle from auto gimbal to manual gimbal to fixed weapons. Now, manual gimbals allow you a little bit more precision and, and turns off the auto locking gimbals. Fixed weapons fire straight forward uh, where your nose is pointing. Well, that said, you're also going to have that addition of that fixed weapon assist helping your projectiles aim and obviously better ESP uh, and better pip drawing. So you're going to be a lot more accurate. Auto gimbling is a light or medium level auto aim. So there's like a dotted line around your reticle, which sort of shows the um, angular uh, area that you'll auto lock onto a target. And then you want to try and aim as near to the target as possible. And that will lock on for some pretty accurate fire. You're going to be constrained a reasonable amount by the speed your gimbals can turn and stuff like that and if someone's very evasive it's actually quite hard to hit them um, if they're in a smaller ship and they are trying to avoid you um, and fixed weapons might be a better choice now because of the way that they can still get some um, hits in so um, still very powerful in 3.10 auto gimbling for sure turrets also benefit from this fixed weapon assist, which makes them not just viable, but extremely powerful. Also, you can toggle between V-Joy and one-to-one -one relative mouse by pressing Q while in a turret. And you can also actually do that while in a mole mining turret. So bear that in mind. If you're going, why does my turret feel clunky or slow? Uh, then you can press Q, bam. Um, it's, a, it's a different sort of aiming mode for it. Um, turrets feel very different in those two modes and people can use joysticks to aim with them more effectively while in V-Joy mode. So you'll be like, actually, this works. Also, don't forget gyro stabilization, which is toggled by pressing G. That's going to enable you to help keep your turret steady. And um, V will also change to a staggered firing mode, boom, 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 firing uh, weapons slightly offset. And holding C will recenter that turret. You can also turn off and on uh, ESP with E if you want. I leave it on at the moment. More generally, you can adjust ESP settings in the game settings uh, to make it more or less sensitive if you wish. The general feel of ESP and aiming is significantly better in 3.10 in my opinion. So there are some now genuine reasons to use fixed weapons, like they're not trash idea anymore. They have higher DPS, and if you're good with them, then that's just more DPS um, rather than just using auto gambling. So more DPS, if you're more accurate and can fly well and can bring them to bear, then fixed weapon, that sounds like a, a good loadout to me. Using head tracking or a webcam or track IR, that's now very useful as well because of the targeting system is a look-based um, targeting system now where you're looking for targets. You're going to be using your radar a lot more as well because you'll see targets on your radar and you'll go, ah, I know that a target's up there. So you'll be able to go up there and uh, pin it and lock it or whatever. And so bear that in mind. If you're like, I don't know where this target is, look at your radar and um, do a scan. Scanning is going to be a lot more important now. Targeting is a little fiddly at first, but give it a little time and I actually think you'll like it. It makes scanning, detection and target management much more important important, which then enables you to do a lot more with the combat model and these mod crew ships and turrets and, and loads of different like um, players doing system operations and stuff on multi crew ships. Turrets are great. However, at the moment, while I'm not a great pilot and not great at combat, it does feel a little bit DPS racy, um, at least at this sort of like early stage where everyone's doing a very similar thing. And I can't work out what the sort of like skill floor for making new and casual players feel effective in the game and how that compares to potential skill ceilings for players that are genuinely great pilots. How, how does that compare? Um, is there a competitive PvP scene? Uh, that sort of stuff. Or is it just sort of like, well auto gimbal charge uh, or fixed weapon assist just build uh, the the one true meta build uh, and that's what they're trying to avoid um, here they want lots and lots and lots of different metas to form not just a one ship with this particular loadout just beats everything else there are also lots of bits that could be done to improve this combat model further but i'd actually say that the game could probably benefit now from a bit of item and weapon balance or at least soon um, because what we've got in 3.10 could be pretty good fun. I'm really enjoying it. I'm interested to know what you think based on if you've been playing the 3.10 um, uh, first wave PTU 
have you been playing lots of Star Citizen previously? Like, um, what's your favourite flight model patch? So mine, for example, is, is a, while, a little while ago, 2.6.3. That was great for, for ship combat and arena commander and stuff. But if 3.10.0 gets a little bit more refined, then I actually think it could be a good contender. And it's certainly a great step forward for what they need in game. If you don't have 3.10 yet, then what do you think about what you've seen so far? Good on paper? Bad? Hate it? Love it? Whatever your thoughts, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Every month there's a ship giveaway. For the month of July, we have a Banu Merchantman and Star Citizen game package to give away. All you need to do to be in for a chance of winning that is comment on any of my videos made during July 2020. Details to that down below in the links. I'm also a shill for NordVPN. If you're looking for a VPN, then Nord should be considered. It's cheap and fast and helps keep you secure, anonymous, and give you greater access to websites and informations. Use the links below if you're thinking about getting a VPN. Also, a special thank you to Azatech for supporting my content. Find out more down below because they sent me a Alienware um, Aurora A10. But there's more to it than that, and you can see all the details of my spec down below and all that sort of jazz. If you'd like to further support my channel or content, then please consider becoming a YouTube member, a Patreon, or even donating. But sharing, commenting, subscribing, and liking, all of that really does help too. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the verse.